Good morning, welcome to Viking Preparedness. I am PJ, matter of fact, here. More of this is indicated. Today's video comes about by inspiration from Kevin Musak and to a degree, Lon Simpson. Kevin posted something very recently in the community section about a rucksack cover uh, that he used and, and modified and things like that. And I started responding to it with my thumbs and just more and more and more and more stuff came. And so that's how this was born. Chew the meat, spit out the bones. Uh, doesn't matter if you were in the military or not. Doesn't matter if you have a rucksack like this or not. Uh, there are things that I'm going to talk about that are applicable to you uh, because number one, you should have a bug out bag. Number two, you should have some kind of plans of getting away from wherever you are and getting to wherever you need to go on foot because at the end of the day, that may be what is required for you to live, march or die. <clears throat> and you should be taking up backpacking and hiking and things like that. It's just a fun activity anyway. Okay, without further ado, this is a project for me. Uh, it is what I'm calling my I'm never coming home bag. It is not complete yet. It literally is just I'm, I made a list of things that go in said bag. I may make a book out of it. And I started throwing them in this rucksack, uh, which I'll probably use um, to hold it until I can actually put it together and, and organize it. Um, so my never coming home bag, it, the basis of it is an Alice large rucksack. That's what it's called. Uh, Alice was a line of gear that the army used, I think from the Vietnam era up through the current, you know, unpleasantness in Iraq and Afghanistan. Um, and so I want to talk about this rucksack. This is actually one I actually had in the military, and I'm going to tell you some modifications we made to it. Started uh, when I was in the infantry, we became light infantry, and we were issued uh, the Alice Medium rucksack. This one I was a platoon leader, regular infantry, and it was smaller than this rucksack. It had this rucksack. It had three pockets kind of like this on the bottom of it, the Alice Medium, but it did not have these three pockets here, and it was a little bit smaller in overall dimensions. And uh, I went to the scout platoon, the reconnaissance platoon, and we all bought our own Alice Large rucksacks because we weren't issued Alice Large. We all bought the big ones. And at one point, and we modified them rather heavily, uh, at one point, our battalion operations officer issued an edict under the battalion commander's signature, over the battalion commander's whatever, and he said, hey, no one is allowed to carry an Alice Large rucksack because you're putting too much crap in it, and we all had to read for professional development, soldier's load and weight of a nation and something else, um, and it's like you're carrying too much stuff. And I went, I said, I cannot do my job, um, as a scout platoon leader, reconnaissance platoon leader, if you're going to make me carry a little rucksack. I can't fit what I need to carry in it. And he's like, oh, that's crap, blah, blah, blah. And so I said, would you like to look at our loadout? And he said, yes, uh, get, get it together and let me know. I said, they're together now because we kept our rucks packed. And uh, we went and showed him. And he said, okay, scout platoon can carry large rucksacks. So uh, the first thing we did, and this is kind of faded. You can't really see it that well anymore. You might be able to in the camera. We bought the rucksacks and then we spray painted them. And typically we used tan and black spray paint. And so we just put like stripes on them to kind of break up the outline of the big green tick. Um, after we spray painted, because camouflage, because we're scouts, we're reconnaissance, we're trying to slip through. And in fact, many times in exercises, uh, we slip through two different units uh, very carefully. And so this is big and green, and in general, it's a subdued color, but you can make it better by breaking up the pattern. Now, you can kind of see it on here. Um, after we spray painted it, then we took, at the time, the stuff they sold in the PX, which is like a military Walmart, uh, spray camp dry. And it was basically a silicon spray 
that we sprayed uh, usually two or three times after we painted it over the whole rucksack and it made water just pop off of the rucksack. So it kept the rucksack kind of dry inside. We also, inside the rucksack, everything was always waterproofed all the time. And so this is just a big compartment right here. There's no, there's one little inner radio pocket is what they call it in the back, but basically a big compartment. We had a what's called a military waterproof bag, and it was kind of like a nylon on the outside and a rubber on the inside. And you would check your bag for waterproofness by putting it over your head and looking up at the sky to see if there are any pinholes in it, because invariably there were. And so what we all ended up doing is going out and buying new ones uh, on our own with our own money. So you have a new waterproof bag. It's heavy duty and heavy. That goes in, in here. Then we would take almost every deployment a new uh, big black trash bag, like yard trash bag, stick that inside the waterproof bag. Then you pack all your stuff in there, and a lot of it was in Ziploc bags also, like your socks were in Ziploc bags and stuff. So again, waterproofed again. Then when it was in there, we would take the black bag and twist it and then fold it over and take a little piece of string and tie it goosenecked. Then we would take the military waterproof bag and do the same thing. We'd close it, get all the air out of it, roll it, roll it, roll it, bend it over, and then it had straps, uh, strings on it, and we would wrap that around and tuck it in. And so this rucksack you could take and throw into a lake. Uh, you could do a stream crossing without having to stop and unpack. And it was our SOP, standard operating procedure, that you always kept it that way. So if we stop somewhere and we're going to eat lunch or, you know, whatever, uh, you get into your rucksack. But before we go, you, you tighten it up so you're ready for a water crossing. So you don't have to stop before you do the water crossing to get all your stuff ready. We would just go. And we were in Hawaii. We operated in California and Korea and... Did we go anywhere else? I think that was probably it. Mostly Hawaii, very wet, lots of stream crossings. Um, so, kept it waterproofed, camouflaged it, sprayed a uh, waterproof spray on it. Um, we also carried a piece of camo net, military camouflage netting. It's like a, almost like a gill net, green gill net with a uh, plastic, I don't know, some kind of rubberized material of patterns. If, if you know, you know. If you don't, you don't. But it's like a camouflage net that they stretch over vehicles and things like that. And there was always extra of that laying around. And we all took a piece about this big and we would roll it, fold it, and then roll it up. And we usually carried it underneath this flat right here, like that. Um, and then if we had to cache our rucks, we had to stop sometime and leave our rucks behind and go forward with just our patrol gear to do something. Uh, we would pull that out because this, you have three of these, four of these in a little pile over there by a tree. You notice it when you're in the woods. <coughs> and uh, we would take that out, stretch it out and drape it over it. And it would camouflage it, make it disappear, tuck it up underneath a bush. So no one would find it while we were gone. Um, why don't you wear it? We tried putting it on the outside of the ruck when we were walking so you look like a big bush moving. The problem is it's a net and it gets caught up in everything as you're going through the brush. You know, you're not hiking on little well-groomed Appalachian Trail, right? You're going through the middle of the woods and it was just, it was too hard to do. You have to go zzz when, you, when you get through, which is why if you have a bug out bag, uh, you don't want one a rucksack that comes up to here. Because man, when your rucksack is this high, like backpackers carry, because it gets all the weight up above your shoulders and you know, that's a, that's a good thing, it's easier to carry. When your stuff is up here, it's catching on everything. The other thing, uh, we had to, it was a division policy, carry a shovel. Uh, at one time, some idiot general said everybody had to wear their shovel on their LBE, what an idiot. Um, and inspected that. Um, we all had shovels that we had to carry. And this, and we also had uh, two quart canteens that would hook up here, and so they'd stick outboard. We usually put the shovel inside the ruck. When I was in the regular infantry before as a scout platoon leader, it had to be here, and we had a two quart canteen here. Um, and they just catch everything. They catch vines when you're walking through and, and stuff like that. So to the extent that you can, keep your rucksack down to here and not sticking out. You know, don't have your sleeping pads sticking out to here like curb feelers that catch everything when you're walking through it. 
Um, what else was I typing up? Uh, I, I don't know. I'll just show you some things we also did. Oh, and so then when I went to Special Forces and I became a Special Forces Detachment Commander, I took the ideas that we had developed in the scout platoon and I brought them to my detachment, some of which they were already doing, uh, some of which they hadn't been yet, but we started doing uh, very similar things because uh, without getting too technical, we had a reconnaissance mission as our primary mission. Um, when I went to SF, we did something different and uh, additional. We added these strings, 550 cord, to these pockets and uh, these pockets are, are well designed. They have uh, two snaps, so if one fails, you know, two is one, one is none. And then if you can cinch it down, you take this strap and, and you wrap it around there, and it's pretty secure. But here's the thing. Uh, we jumped out of airplanes, helicopters, and balloons with rucksacks a lot. And when you're jumping, when you're parachuting with a rucksack, it hangs right here from your hips upside down. I know, but it does. It's upside down. And so when you're falling through the air, the last thing in the world you want is your pocket to open up and all your, uh, let's see what I have in here, all your tweezers to fall out and, you know, litter the countryside. And so we added these and before we would go to jump, um, we would, in addition to snapping it closed, And this rucksack, I had to go look for this rucksack. I haven't played with this for a while. I'm just going to snap one for now. Um, we would tie it down like this as an added safety feature, just a simple square knot. Now, when we're running through the woods, we didn't, we didn't do that. Um, but when we were jumping, we would do that. And then that keeps your pocket closed. The other thing the Alice Large has that the Alice Medium doesn't, the two side pockets have cinches on them right here so you can cinch the pocket uh, tightly closed at the top. So if you have little items, you put them in here. Typically what we put in here was a poncho. Just It would take up the whole pocket. Why in this pocket? Because if we had to stop and get shelter up quickly, boop, open that up and you know your shelter's there. You don't have to dig around in your rucksack. But uh, that's it. That's what we did. I think that's everything I wanted to talk about. Uh, there are tidbits there for you uh, that you can apply to your own rucksack. I tell you what I'd be interested in your comments on. Uh, what rucksack do you have, backpack, do you have for your bug out bag? What are you using? I'll tell you right now, I'm not using this. Um, my The one I've been using the most is in a little London Bridge, like three-day assault pack. That's the one I've been carrying around in the car when we go places. More of a get-me-home bag. My uh, main Bob bug-out bag is from Cabela's, and it's like an Alaskan guide something. And it's pretty big. Yeah, and it does stick up. The frame comes up to here. It's like a pretty much a standard framed, you know, backpacker-type rucksack. It's camo. has a place to stick your rifle. I've got a holster hooked onto it. And, and it holds a lot of stuff because I used to do the winter bug out bag exercise. And in winter, if you live in a cold environment, you need a bigger rucksack to hold your sleeping bag. Because I don't care how cool, how uh, high speed your sleeping bag is. If it's going to keep you warm in very cold temperatures, it takes up a lot of space. You got to do something with that. It's got to go somewhere. Um, this is not ideal for that. And in fact, when I was in Special Forces and we were doing cold weather stuff, we had a, a Lerva low but it's Lerva, like means lion in German, rucksack. That was a, a it was a big rucksack. Uh, you do what you have to. All right. So yeah, what rucksack, what backpack are you using for your bug out bag? Because you, you, I have, I need a building this big for my camping, outdoor, trapping, hunting gear. And this is a 12 by 20. I, I really do. I, I probably have, I don't want to exaggerate. I have a dozen rucksacks of various kinds for various things. And instead of having them like they are now, where I got to dig through them to find this one to talk to you all about, I would like to, you ever see really big monkey on YouTube? I would like to just have them hanging so I can look at them. Yes, I like this one. Yes, I, I don't know. It's probably vanity. All right. 
I appreciate y'all. I hope you're doing well. Let me know about your ruck. All right. I'll see you out there.